Hi, I'm Janie. I'm the owner of the JC League house here in Galveston, Texas, at least for the time being. Um, and today I want to take you up into the primary bedroom. This was JC and his wife's bedroom and show you one of the few original light fixtures left in the house. And I think it's a really neat fixture. We talked before about how this house was so technologically advanced. It had both electricity and uh, piped in gas, but electricity was a new thing and it was not very reliable. So a lot of fixtures of this era are both gas and electric, which is a little scary to me. And let me show you how that works. They would have coming down in this tube, the electrical wire and a small gas carrying pipe. They both come out the joint here. The gas is directed up and you can see a valve right here that would open and close the gas and a burner tip on top. So when the electricity went out, they would have a stool or a ladder come in, open the valve and light the gas. The electric wire would come down in this tube and come up into kind of what we you know, think of as a traditional socket. Now I think this fixture is fabulous for several reasons. One, because it's original, but it has some really neat detail. It's got this beautiful little finial on the bottom and some very detailed um, kind of work on the bottom and the top. It's got this wonderful ribbing here on the gas part of the lamp. And then this very traditional um, Victorian design here that you see in a lot of fixtures. And then this kind of cool open baskety part. And what I never noticed until we climbed up here to do this, because they're so dirty, but I think these globes are original. And actually I'm going to try to take them down today. Maybe not. I'll have to go get some pliers. But if you get very close, you can see they're etched with a fancy wreath design and this garland of flowers underneath and some kind of a torch design in the middle. And all four of them are here, which is really remarkable to be that old in this house and still have all four. There are some condition issues. You can see this wonderful basket here. It's missing over here, so we'll have to have something made or find something to replace that. These little um, holders for the globes are very delicate and deteriorated. They can probably be refinished and, and saved, but overall it's in great condition. So I'm thrilled, thrilled to have it. I found a very similar fixture on eBay and you can uh, see it's quite expensive, although it does appear to be in much better condition than the one here at the Lee Kempner house. But hopefully this one can come down and be refurbished and it will look good as new. Let's take a look at the other light fixtures in the house, or I should say where the other light fixtures used to be. Here in the foyer, you can see where a light fixture used to hang. And fortunately, I have this fixture. I took it down to have it cleaned and rewired. It's upstairs in storage. I'll show you that in a minute. It's pretty, but I'm not sure it's original to the house. In the parlor, there's nothing. There is a space on the ceiling that probably covers an electrical box where the fixture used to hang, but I have no idea what that fixture looked like and I haven't been able to find any interior pictures of the house. So that's probably going to be a mystery. The parlor is really large and fancy, so it's going to need an impressive light fixture. It's the same in the study. There's a plate on the ceiling where a fixture used to be, and I have a temporary light up there because with the plywood over the windows, this room is really dark even in the day. There were some scones on the wall. <laughs> scones, that's something you eat. There were some sconces on the wall, but again, they've been removed. They were maybe stolen when the house was vandalized before I bought it. Towards the back of the receiving area, there's another plate on the ceiling where a fixture probably hung. Again, no idea what that would have looked like. 
and hopefully you saw the video about the dining room chandelier. It was also vandalized and it looks really sad, but for those of you who aren't caught up on prior videos, an interesting thing about this fixture is that it isn't electrified. It was just made to hold candles. This would have been a very dark room because the only other lighting in this room are two small sconces on either side of the buffet and a wall sconce on the opposite wall. Or again, I should say where sconces used to be because those are gone also. The stairwell showed no signs of ever having any type of lighting. That seems pretty dangerous to me. There's a small hanging combination gas electric fixture up in the hall area above. We'll go up there and get a closer look. This combination fixture has two gas lights pointing up and an electric light hanging down in the center. Originally in a gas fixture, the lights were always facing up like this because a flame burns up. Think of trying to hold a candle upside down. That wouldn't work very well. Let me back up just a little and talk for a minute about gas lighting. Everybody knows what a revolution in electricity was, but gas was a revolution in and of itself, and it was just as important at the time. Before the 1800s, lighting came from candles, oil lamps, and rush lights, which are just rush plants dried and dipped in grease. That sounds lovely, but those didn't give off much light, and they were very smoky and smelly. In 1792, a Scottish inventor, William Murdoch, discovered something that transformed not only lighting, but heating, cooking, and all sorts of other activities. He found a way to produce gas by heating coal in a closed container and collecting and cleaning the fumes it produced. It's called coal gasification. Remember, natural gas wasn't a thing yet. But anyway, Murdoch used the gas he made to light his house, and the light was so much brighter and safer than candles or oil lamps. Coal gasification caught on in a big way and fast. Gas lighting started showing up around 1807, and soon thousands and thousands of coal gasification plants were built. The plants needed to be built near where the gas was consumed because transportation was crude and there were lots of leaks and explosions. But the ability to have light at night was such a big deal, people were willing to live with the risk. By 1850, Coal gas had been adopted in cities across the world for street lighting and homes were being piped for gas lighting. In 1860, a standard was introduced, meaning all gas produced had to be of a high enough quality to produce a light equivalent to 12 candles. One of the first uses of the lighting aspect was street lights. The lamps were lit by a lamplighter with a wick on the end of a pole, and eventually pilot lights and timers were invented. But the gas lights still needed a lot of maintenance. I never thought about it, but those classic bars you see coming out the sides of old gas street lights were to stabilize the ladder. If you've ever tried to put a ladder up against a skinny tree, you know how difficult it is to get it stable. So I think these bars are a simple elegant solution. I just always thought of them as decorative, not practical. Gas may have burned brighter than candles, but it didn't burn as bright as a light bulb when that invention came around. But gas was able to remain competitive with electric lighting for a long time due to another invention. In 1880, Austrian chemist Carl von Welsbach perfected the incandescent glass mantle. A mantle is just a fine gauze impregnated with rare earth metals. When heated to a high temperature, the mantle produced a much, much brighter light than a naked flame, and even brighter than a lot of light bulbs at the time. So gas lighting remained competitive with electric lights until sometime in the 1930s. Most of you have probably seen that mantle technology in the good old Coleman lantern. I can remember camping as a Girl Scout and having to pump up the lantern in that bright, bright white light that came from the mantle. The mantle was also modified in the 1990s so that it could burn in a downward position. That was also a big deal because a lot of light was directed up to the top of a room instead of down in a room where it was needed. Natural gas was discovered in the early 1800s, but it wasn't until 1910 to 1920 when pipeline technology and actually welding improvements made it possible to transport the gas the long, long distances from the well where it was produced to where it needed to be consumed. And most coal gasification plants were shut down at the time. 
By then, gas lighting was on its way out. And just as a side note, if you're old enough like me to remember, coal gasification became a hot topic in the energy crisis in the 70s when it was thought the world would run out of oil and natural gas. That's kind of your mini nerd topic for the day. Let me get back to the Lee Kempner house and all of its lighting or lack of lighting woes. Here in Uncle Lee's bedroom, the most interesting thing to me is that there's no indication that this room ever had a light fixture. Over here in the wall where the bed probably went, there's wiring on the wall for sconces. If you look up close, you can see that it was one of those combination gas electric fixtures. I think you might be able to see a little better on this other one. This room would have been very dark at night, but it did have a lot of windows for during the day. Over in the big west bedroom that was Daisy Legs, there's just this tiny little 1920s kind of art deco light fixture. This room is huge and this fixture is tiny and snug up against the ceiling. My guess is that the original fixture was taken down and it was replaced by this one when Eliza Kempner remodeled and redecorated. And I love art deco lighting and I love this fixture, but I think it's not the right scale for this big room. Over in that little sleeping porch alcove on the side, there's also a little bitty crystal basket fixture. It's so dirty it's hard to see, but it's also really neat. And again, the scale just doesn't seem to be right. So I've got a conundrum whether to keep them or to replace them with something else. And maybe I can reuse them somewhere else in the house. And I actually have one idea where that might be. I think the sconce in the pink bathroom is interesting because it's somewhat fancy in a gold color, which doesn't seem to go with the rest of the style of the tile or the fixtures in this bathroom. The original tub fixtures are brushed nickel, and I've seen color advertisements for bathrooms from this time that did have lighting similar to this, so this sconce could be original, but I'm not sure. The very sad added on bedroom has a, or did have a modern ceiling fan that's long gone when we did the demolition. And I have no idea what original fixture would have been here. But I'm thinking maybe that small fixture from Daisy's bedroom should come in here. Now, the lighting is so poor in here. This is that dressing room area. I don't know if it'll show up, but it also had wall sconces. And at one time, they were gas and electric combo, but they were replaced by just an electric fixture at some point. I don't know if it would have hung down or maybe been turned up. Who knows? They were just kind of hanging here when I got here. I think I took the other one off and locked it in my storeroom. I think this is really cool. In the servants' hall, they had gas lighting. It wasn't a combination fixture. It was strictly a gas light. The fixture part is gone, but that can be replaced. It also had separate wiring for electric sconces but it didn't have the combination gas electric fixture. I'll take you in my messy storeroom. This is the servant's bedroom where I keep everything locked away. But this is the light fixture that was in the front hall, right? When you come in the front door and it's beautiful. It's a very heavy brass and you can see it's got this etched detail. In it. I love all the detail on it. Very pretty. Tilt it up. Show you the center ball. I don't know what those are called. I'll have to look that up. Even arms have this amazing detail in the underside. This is going to be beautiful when it's all cleaned up and polished. Now somewhere in here, oh, I have a few things I bought. 
that's just a little fixture for the bathroom in the basement. I wanted something authentic. I thought it was pretty. These sconces I just bought. They're old, but I don't know that they're old enough. But I like the scale of them. These are just some other sconces that I've had for a while. And I thought I might find a place to use them down here. They might need to be repainted, maybe even stripped and just left all brass. And that's it. That is the sum total of the light fixtures left in this house. Not much to work with. And you already saw the 1920s fan that came down out of the family bathroom. You can tell I've made quite a mess of it. I'll do a video showing what's going on there. So there you have it. This house is pretty pitiful when it comes to light fixtures, other than, of course, this fabulous one in that combination gas electric one at the top of the grand staircase. There's really, you know, not much left to work with. It makes me a little sad because the point of the restoration is to get this house as close as possible to how it looked at the time it was built in 1893. And we just don't have any photographs or anything of the inside to go by. It does give me a chance to go shopping, which I guess is a positive. And next to my tile obsession, light fixtures are right there underneath next level down. So I... I don't have to worry about it for a long time because there's no electricity in the house and there's a lot more to do, but I thought you might enjoy a look at some of the detail of this house and especially this fabulous fixture. If you're new, check us out and subscribe and get caught up on all the other videos. If you're already a subscriber, thanks for watching and helping restore this house.